I'm Katie Kempner, and welcome to Perspectives here at Advertising Week Europe. Perspectives is a series of inspiring conversations with remarkable working women who are leading busy and successful lives. And it is my pleasure to have my most regular and favorite guest, Kathleen Saxton, founder of The Lighthouse Company. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so lovely, <laughs> genuinely lovely to see you again. Thank you. You as well. So I saw that you're leading this morning meditations here. Mm. Well, it's all a new about track balance. for this year. Yeah, tell us, tell us. Well, as you know, I've been a headhunter for a number of years, and then I trained as a psychotherapist. And our view was, you know, can we start to really bring some mental wellness to this week and indeed the industry? And I think we often pay lots of lip service to it, but we felt whether or not we could actually bring a whole morning of. Um, sessions that are based around mindfulness, physical wellness, mental wellness, and understanding all the stress and anxiety. And we thought, what better way to start than with a meditation? Can we get our parasympathetic nervous system into the right position in order to kind of really understand what's going on? Did, have a lot of people done it? Ha have you had packed house of people getting themselves We have. Centered? So do you know, I think what's happening is, interestingly, the millennials are really keen on this kind of work. Yeah. So they almost take it as second nature. They're either yogis already or they certainly practice some level of meditation. I think what's going to happen tomorrow morning specifically, because we have this entire track, is quite a lot of more senior executives are coming to some of those sessions. And I think it's going to be interesting to see whether or not they can give themselves up to the process. I'm going to take them through what we call a guided visualisation. So it's a story that I'm going to ask them to close their eyes, get into their breathing and then take them through a story um, and obviously different facets of that story tell them something about their unconscious self. So I'm hoping they may learn something about themselves during that process. I'm going to do what's called the apple exercise. I was trained in it when I was training as a psychotherapist and it's all about how we see ourselves in the world and how we relate. Interesting. How important, you know, i have always talking about balance, which a lot of people hate that word. I happen to like it. But um, how important are things like meditation to leading a sort of a more centered life? I think they're imperative. I am absolutely an always on highly energetic individual. So trying to find ways to calm myself down was something that felt rather foreign to me a number of years ago. I think I I think myself and along with lots of people in our industry felt that the badge of busyness was really important. So to be showing that you're taking time out and relaxing and being gentle with yourself just wasn't very fashionable then. It was all about being uber busy, working seven day weeks and almost being as a female actually rather alpha female of type. That was what we translated as women as how you needed to be to be successful. And of course it was a great big con because the truth is we need to do it in a way that is natural to us. And male or female, I think it's important. Our downtime, our holidays, our moments of reflection, morning and or evening about your day are absolutely critical because our thinking time our creative time, that space that we have in our minds is when we are actually probably able to be more productive. So it was understanding the difference between busyness versus effectiveness. And actually, I find meditation is a way that you can really connect back into what's really going on for you. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I've noticed that too, that you know, and not just busyness, also like there was a period of time where you had to put in the hours and you needed to be there, which was especially difficult as a mom or a younger working mom, figuring out how am I gonna be here so I can be on par with everybody else. But being there doesn't mean that you're actually being productive. Well, if you're there, but you're on your screen, you're not particularly present. Yeah. So, you know, it sounds all a bit trendy to say, but are you present? But it is about, are you really there in every single way? And actually, we sometimes see this I see this as a headhunter, but I see it even during an advertising week where people are being interviewed. Is somebody really right there in that moment or are they going through the motions because their mind is elsewhere? And we all get distracted from time to time. But actually, as human beings, we want to really relate and we also relate in our vulnerability. So getting into a conversation that's genuinely real and interested as well as interesting is what we need to do. And again, if we are connected to ourselves, we have a better chance of being able to do that because we're genuinely interested. Yes. Well, I'm genuinely interested in something that I wanted to ask you about. One thing that I think is interesting for women in the workplace, I was always very focused on 
and I still am, how women can, you know, have children and lead this life of working and balancing their kids and work. And both you and I are recently in the position that our kids are now grown and in can university. Can you believe it? No, I <laughs> cannot believe it. And, you know, we're empty nesters. And for me, I was saying to you before we started, for the first three months, I think, I walked around as if someone had died. I was so confused. My son had already been to college and my daughter left and it felt so incredibly empty. I mean, of course, my husband was there, but, you know, and he kept saying, why are you walking around like this? It's great. We're free. And really, it took a little bit of time. And now I've gotten into this place where I love it. And I can also concentrate more on my business and focus more on my career. I'd love to hear f from you what empty nesting sort of means to you personally. And then also as a headhunter, what it means to women who have a chance and are, you know, still young enough to really contribute to to their careers. Of course. So, well, for me personally, it kind of crept up on me ridiculously because obviously I knew that both my children would, would want to go on and study and actually both have gone and studied in different places. So my son, Ned, is 21. He's in his third year at university down in Bournemouth. So he's not too far. He's three three hour drive away, so close enough. I pathetically become that woman where he comes back in the holidays and I'm desperate to wash his and iron his clothes. I've never wanted to wash and iron anyone's clothes, but suddenly it's become a treat for me to do that for my son. And actually I've really seen him develop as a, as a human being and as a, and as a man and it's been incredible to watch but yeah I would find myself walking past his bedroom you know looking longingly into it but it was an empty an empty bed was there so suddenly I really felt it with my daughter she's actually gone to London College of Fashion so she's not very far but she is in an independent flat of her own the good news with Nancy is that I think my house is always warm and full of food and often quite treat food um, so I find her visiting of a weekend from time to time. And I have to tell you, it makes my heart sore. So um, it's interesting, though, that, again, the, the emptiness of that does hit you. Um, and I don't have a husband yet, I say, Katie. So um, my house was really quiet. And, and actually, the silence of that, yes, the freedom that comes with that. But also, suddenly, one of my jobs had gone, in a way. And I suddenly felt rather redundant in that space. And, um, and it is a bit of a shock, even though you know it's coming. What's interesting, I think, for women in general, however, is... Um, what happens to you then? And I think for lots of women, and I see this often as a headhunter, it gives them the chance to reawaken some of the more entrepreneurial feelings that maybe they've had for quite some time, but have felt their duty of care to their children, and, and I'm sure men feel this too, has been a case where they've sort of put that on the back burner or thought maybe I might get to it at some point. And then suddenly that point comes mm -hmm. because suddenly they do have the space and the time to do that. And to your point, I think it, it takes a few months to readjust and realise that they're not coming back uh, anytime soon other than for great reasons and holidays and birthdays and Mother's Days and all those sorts of things. But actually, what can you do with that time? So, you know, we've often found, certainly in Europe, that... Um, for example, on the big chief commercial uh, revenue officer type roles, we had struggled in past years to find senior women who really were willing and wanting to do those roles. They can be very heavy on the client entertaining, long hours, uh, lots of travel, those kinds of things. And if you were in a situation as a mother where you wanted to be home, you wanted to be as present as you could be, some of those roles felt not really in, in rhythm and balance with, with what you were, where you were. Suddenly, those roles become very exciting for these women who have also got great experience in the world, are at an age and stage where they carry experience of both the analog and a digital world, mm -hmm. um, and are able to bring that wisdom and maturity and polish, actually, uh, to some of these big roles. So as a headhunter, it's brilliant news. As a woman, as an empty nester, I'm beginning to see how it's almost like a second lease of life that comes for your career. Okay, so I could write a book now on just all the things you have, all the advice you've given over the years, but you know my favorite last question. And so now, <laughs> part 12. <laughs> no. If there's one piece of advice that you could share with us that has helped get you through your life and your career, what is it? Do you know, I'm inspired, I believe this anyway, but I was inspired yesterday by a session we did with a guy called Ant Middleton, who's on a Channel 4 show. He's an ex-SAS instructor. And his view is that sometimes you have to be the first person in. And I think for women in leadership roles, um, because 
it's taken a while for us to get to some level of equality. We're not as familiar sometimes of being the bravest first person that goes in. And I said to him yesterday, what happens on the days when you just don't feel like you want to be that first person in as a leader? And he said, I have to think about my platoon, my squadron, my people. And I, I feel very similar to that, which is sometimes we have to reach and find our courage and our bravery. We are Our industry is in the most uncertain times. I think in society, as women, we are in very uncertain times so sometimes you have to pick up your courage and make a decision of what you're going to do and maybe there is no one that's gone before you and no one that's tried this before and it's going to be you and you have to take that acceptance of it's going to be you well you live that so you're amazing and thank you so much for talking with us listen you uncover such amazing topics on this and i'm very grateful to you for doing that too thank you katie and thank you